Four Rancho Cucamonga Lifeway Church Ministries. The wedding. We have Sister Joyce. We have Sister Joyce. Lifeway Church Ministries, Rancho Cucamonga. And then we have Apostle William H. Whitfield Jr. And they're going to come in that order and let God use them. Amen.
two anointings mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. one man. Mm -hmm. We have the Ishmael anointing. Mm -hmm. That's the one that satisfies, that satisfies the flesh, right? Yeah. <laughs> then we have the Isaac anointing. Mm -hmm. That's the promise. That's the anointing that glorifies yes. God. Yes. Yes. All right, all right. Amen. All right, so when I got my assignment, I was going to start with um, Isaac. Now it's just going to take off running with that, right? And so Father, you know, he was like, nope, go back. Before Abraham was Abraham, he was Abraham. Go on back, right? Yeah. So I went ahead, and what I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to give you guys some scripture. Because it's a timeline. I can't hit all scriptures. I can't go to them. But I want to give you guys some scriptures. Write them down. Study them. So bless your socks off. Promise. All right. So Genesis 12, 1 through 7. Father tells Abram to leave his father's house and go to a land that he's going to uh, show him. Right? Right. He said he's going to make him a great nation. Come on. Abraham's response was obedience. He got up and he left. Right. And worship. He built an altar. Yes. 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 Right? Okay, so next is Genesis 13, 14 through 17. Father tells Abram to look at the land in the north, the south, the east, and the west. Mm -hmm. He tells him he's going to make his descendants as the dust of the earth. Okay. He tells him to walk through the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Through the length of it, through the width of it. He said, I'm going to give it to you, Abram. Right. Abram's response was worship. He Amen. built an altar. Yes, Amen. Genesis 15. I got one. I don't have an end in my notes, so y'all just read my notes. <laughs> y'all supposed to read it, okay? <laughs> right, so Genesis 15. At this point, Abram's talking to Father about being childless, right? Although Father had been talking to him all alone yes. about making him a great nation and blessing his seed, now Abram begins to talk to Father about being childless. Yes. Now Father tells him, all right, we didn't already talk about the, the length of the earth, the width of it, I told you to count the dust. Now just go ahead and look up at the stars. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Take a look at the stars, and if you can number them, Come then Abraham, that, that's the number of your descendants. Right? At this point, Father has Abram um, make a sacrifice. He tells him exactly what to sacrifice. Amen. Amen. No different with us. Amen. When he tells us it's time to, to, to pull back, to sacrifice the things, he tells us exactly what to sacrifice. Amen. He tells me oftentimes sacrifice, you know, pull back from a meal. Right? I want you to go on this fast. I want you to consecrate yourself. I want you to set yourself apart for just me. My response is, yeah. But I gotta juice it up. How many know juice it up is a whole meal? <laughs> Don't judge me. Yeah. <laughs> but Abraham's response was obedience. Genesis 16. Do I have a clock? Genesis 16, 7 through 13. Now, fathers talked to him about blessing his seed. Now, Abraham and Sarah, they get impatient. Right? Go ahead. Make a plan. Sarah tells Abram, hey, I have no kids. I'm getting older. I want somebody to call my own. All right. All right. So Sarah said, hey, you know I got this handmaid. Oh, girl, go ahead. Uh, you know, I give you my permission. Abram looked at her and said, okay. <laughs> Okay, so, so what I find interesting about this though, Father's still talking about blessing Abram's seed. Genesis 16. Yes. 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 He's still talking about blessing Abram's seed. But he talks to Hagar. He doesn't talk to Abram about 
about this. He talks to Hagar. So we, we know the story. Hagar, she gets, she gets um, pregnant. The word of God says the moment that she conceived, she just, our mistress was despised in her eyes. So she started feeling a way about Sarah. Uh, <laughs> and so then she starts, she starts, um, Sarah begins to mistreat her. So then Hagar, she leaves. She gone. Right? She's like, I'm checking the spot. You know, I'm, I'm Egyptian, A E rule. We don't really get down like that anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave. Right, right. Right? So Father says to Hagar, I'm gonna bless your seed. I'm gonna multiply your descendants exceedingly. So that they shall not be counted for multitude. He says, but he's gonna be a wild man. He'll be a wild man. His hand is going to be against everybody, every man. Every man's hand is going to be against him. But I'm going to bless him. How many know that when Father speaks, it's emphatic. There's no ambiguities in there. Ain't no doubt. Ain't no gray area. Ain't no wiggle room. When he speaks, like we can take that word to the bank and we can cash that in. We know what's going to come to pass. So you have to bless the seed. He had been telling Abram all along, I'm going to bless the seed. So now you've acted out of your flesh. I'm going to bless that seed. But he's going to be a wild man. Right? Now, Genesis 17. Now Father puts conditions on it. He says, no longer will you be called Abram. You're going to be called Abraham. Amen. He says, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make a covenant with you now, Abraham. Mm -hmm. But now you've got to walk before me. Mm -hmm. you got to remain in constant, everyday spiritual fellowship with me. Hallelujah. And you got to be blameless. Mm -hmm. you got to live upright before me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Now comes the covenant concerning Isaac. Now Abraham's part of the covenant was, of course, the circumcised the man who went to law, the man who circumcised the ladies. Can you guys imagine the whining and the whimpering of the man? Can you guys imagine that? Okay.
says, and in thy seed shall the nations, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Yes. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Glory God. Glory God. Now, in the beginning verses of Genesis 22, he tells Abraham to make another sacrifice. He tells him exactly what to sacrifice. Right? So when we talk about obedience, like I'm sure Abraham didn't understand when Father told him to sacrifice his only son, the promise. I'm sure he didn't understand that. Right? But he obeyed. Like, if I was Abraham, I could imagine that at this time, now I got Isaac. And I got the promise, and I see it, and it's manifested, it looks good, it feels good. Mm -hmm. We live in our best life. Right. <laughs> and then you tell me to sacrifice mm -hmm. the promise. Mm -hmm. I can imagine if I was Abraham, like, I would get God like, Isaac? Right. Like, why not Ishmael? Right. <laughs> <laughs> why not Jacob? Like, Right, so there's going to be times that he tells us to do something. 
the good for me. Yes. It's going to work out to the good for my children. Yes. It's going to work yes. out to the good for my grandbabies yes. and their grandbabies. Amen. Yes. Yes. And, yes. and my thing is, I'm trying to live in the promise. Right? Yes. I'm trying to live in that anointing. I didn't did enough Ishmael. I want to do Isaac. And I need my children to do Isaac. Yes. I need to make sure that this anointing flows, that it is not hindered, it is not blocked, it is not contaminated, neither is it compromised. I need to make sure that that girl right there, that she knows what to do when she's stuck in a situation. She needs to know what she needs to do and how she needs to answer the world when the world is telling her to go to the left. Yes. <laughs> and she needs to be going to the right. Right? All right. That's good. All right, so because I need to have a steady flow of the anointing, and Father yes. has already told me that I need to forgive my enemies, you know, like my response is like like Abraham. Like you want me to forgive, old girl? Like say no more. Father, you want me to turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Count it done. Mm -hmm. You want me, you want me to not repay evil for evil? I'm gonna do that. Because I need this anointing to flow. Now when we talk about the anointing to carry the glory of God and our promise. I did not share my notes with them. When, when we talk about the anointing to carry the glory of God, we're talking about a supernatural ability and strength. Why? Because the glory is waiting. It's heavy. It's all consuming. Now, you can't be no regular schmegula Joe and be able to carry this anointing. I'm talking about, I'm talking about dunamis power. I'm talking about an anointing that, that causes demons to tremble. I'm talking about walking in this anointing. In every place that the soles of my feet tread, it blows up the spot each and every time. Sacrifice in a shedding 
of some stuff. How many can bear witness that, that from the time you guys told God, yes, for real, all manner of stuff started breaking out? Right? Kids started acting up. Husbands, wives tripping. Family members, they get all of a sudden family members healthy, they get sick. Co-workers start testing the spiritual gay stuff, you know, all kind of stuff. Right? Now, the anointing on my life, it began to cost me before I even realized I was anointed. I didn't even know. It started when I was a little girl. With people telling me what I can't do, what I ain't gonna be. People pointing out what I do wrong instead of what I do right. Okay. Uh, it started uh, at a young age with my mama not stewarding the anointing. Yeah. My yeah. grandparents, they didn't steward the anointing. Come on. Come on. I don't know of a generation past in my life that stewarded the anointing. Now, to be honest, some of the relationships and, and friendships that I lost, you know, it was just kind of like, mm, all right. But then there were the ones that I was vested in. There were some, some relationships and some friendships that, you know, I was, I was riding with people. Like, you know, that was my friend. I had to no matter what. Right? But what they don't understand, when I was a young girl, what, what, what they didn't understand when they started killing the anointing was that I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know I was anointed. I, just, I was just trying to live. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to fit in. I was trying to be loved. I was trying to be normal. I know I'm weird. I know I'm strange. And it's okay. Exactly, but they didn't understand that. Like I was just trying to trying trying to get in how I live, and I wasn't really trying to, you know, be all deep. I didn't understand that. The anointing. I understand now that the anointing makes me act different. It makes me say something that some people don't understand. But had they listened, a lot of folks would have been, would, wouldn't have went to jail. <laughs> they would have saved some people's lives. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And these are the same people that are going to call you okay. family. Mm -hmm. They're going to call you when their children are running them up because they know that you know how to get a friend. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Your 
he said, it's okay. He said, don't do it no more. You guys have sat in the atmosphere full of my glory. You guys have witnessed the manifestation of my presence and my character. Never again from this day forward negotiate. He said, but it's okay, boo. It's all right. I said, thank you, God. He said, so now what you gonna do? I said, okay. I got up. I fixed my helmet. I strapped on my breastplate. I put on my belt. Strapped up my shoes. I shined my sword and sharpened my shield. And I stand before you guys, suited and booted, fit for the master's you, for this assignment and my next assignment.
last year, this, this conference last year, I had to tell her I can't do it. I'm not fit for the fire trees right now. I'm too hurt. I'm too wounded. You don't want me up there praying. You don't want me to say a word to the people. He had to set me by myself because he had to make sure that if don't nobody ever know that you anointed, you got to know it for yourself. You got to believe it.
what we do at barbecues. Another thing, you know, like you are 
anointed and pure. Amen. Pure. Amen. It don't matter what the streets are saying. Right. It don't matter. You're right about it. Anointed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I mean, anointed.